Well, here's my J-Car catalogue. If we turn the page and uh, have a look inside, there's the stripping tool. So the part number of the stripping tool is TH1820. But the purpose of this video is to um, um, go through the process of setting this tool up. There's a number of settings that have to be made. Uh, the first uh, setting is right here. We've got a plastic block that slides in here. Um, and you have to relocate that block um, to suit the type of coax cable that you're attempting to strip. Now in my case I'm stripping RG58 so I'm using this curve here which is between 8 and 9. Um, you get the block out of here just simply by um, sliding it through like that. It just slips out and you can uh, turn the block over to suit yourself. Okay, the other setting that needs to be made here is the depth of the two blades. Now if you look down into the jaws of this thing you'll see there's a blade there and there's a blade on this side here. This blade here has got a little notch in it. Now the depth of those two blades is set with these two um, Allen headed screws here and the tool actually comes complete with um, an Allen tool to, to uh, undertake that adjustment with. Um, now be before we actually get to setting depths um, the other thing we need to do is actually set the separation of the um, of the jaws down in here um, set the, the separation between these two now the separation that we require is the the, um, the, the length here between the end of the connector and this shoulder because what we're attempting to do is we're attempting with the stripper to strip the outer portion of the um, uh, of the coax cable so we need to know roughly what that dimension is between there and there before we start that setup process now the trick with these tools because they're quite difficult to um, um, adjust because well, everything's spring loaded. The trick with these tools is to um, first of all push this pin out of here. And I'm just applying a bit of pressure and pull it out. Lay that on the table somewhere and let this particular top jaw go, and you'll notice there's a spring in there. So just set that to one side. Okay. Now we have, if you look closely in the inside of the of your tool when you when you get it, there's um, um, in the plastic there's um, markings A, B, C, D, and E. Now I've currently got my blades for this tool. Um, the blade with the little notch in it. That one there is currently in position A, and the other cutter blade, this one here, is currently in position D. Now, to move these blades, you can actually um, lift them up and out like that. Um, but if you need to shift them from there to there, for instance, um, you'll need to create a little bit of gap for yourself by simply pushing that pin out. So you can push that pin away, as you can just see there in the video, and then you can relocate that blade from there and into that slot there. Or if it's the other side you need to move, I'll just turn this around. You can push this pin through that way, and then shift the blade wherever you want at this end into the appropriate slots. I found it quite useful to use a pair of tweezers to lift this blade out um, and relocate it. 
but uh, once you've actually got the blade in the right place push the pin back in until it lines up and the only thing that's actually holding it in place is friction and once you've um, got that in the right place assemble this there's a tiny little plastic upstand in that side there that captures the center of the spring fit that into there push the the, um, the jaw in like that until the hole lines up and poke the pin in there and you've reassembled your stripping tool now to set your stripping tool up we're going to now need to adjust these two here a bit of scrap and we'll chop the end off of this and you'll need the connect that you require um, and what you're attempting to do here is and I've already set these blades up what you're attempting to do here is toil the blade round obviously and pull one end off so that um, this cut here has cut through the black outer jacket as well as the um, braid or screen and it's left the center conductor intact and back here we've got another and I'll just bend it like that and perhaps we can see it we can we've got another cut here we've just done with the other blade and it is just going through the black outer so if we peel this blade here off, we'll peel this jacket off. When we peel the black outer off like that, we have perfectly stripped coaxial cable. Um, there's the, um, the black outer, there's the braid, and there's the, the center, or the, um, the dielectric and the center conductor. Now what we're attempting to do here is of course when you adjust this you want this um, length of exposed braid to be roughly the same length as the knurled section I'll hold it like that is the knurled section on the on this connector so this length here needs to be the same as that length there of course when you're um, assembling your connector um, there will be a minor gap in front up here so there will be a tiny little gap depending on the makeup of your connector there will be a tiny little uh, gap in front of the braid um, where you'll be stripping the um, dielectric away to expose the center conductor just trim that off there like that um, yeah so the separation between your blades in this tool largely determine the gap between there and there and the depth setting which is done with the two screws in the bottom you adjust them until such time as this one just cuts through the black outer and the other blade cuts through the black outer plus the um, the braid now once you've got your tool set up one recommendation I can make is um, put a little drop of um, Oh, almost anything, a little drop of glue or um, you know, the other one is um, I've got some um, some fishing rod lacquer um, for replacing the bindings on fishing rods put a little little drop of something like that just on these two threads to stop these two from moving and that is a completed um, and correctly set up stripping tool